here. I just want to greet my pastor, um, ministers, elders, the whole household of faith, visitors, everyone in the name of Jesus. I have to follow protocol. Um, <laughs> um, when pastor told me I was going to do this, I was driving. Um, I was driving. I could put him on loudspeaker. And he said to me, um, I want you to talk on Sunday. Never told me that I was going to be one of the talkers first, so I thought I was teaching. So when he told me that I was un unsteady on the wheel, yeah, I was unsteady, I had to kind of come to a stop. And I said, would you be part, you mean the, the preach? And he said, no, I've got other speakers that still haven't made any difference to me. I just want to talk. So I said to him, pastor, are you sure you've got the right person? You know, um, as I always say, I, even this week, funny enough, I was saying to God, I don't even know how the conversation started. I said, I don't want to come up here and talk any other time. If anyone asks me, including my president or anyone, I'm going to tell them no. So it happens that pastor asks me on Friday and I'm saying yes. So I'm here. So do I see you? Um, but a scripture came to me this week, or I should say I heard it more than one time during this week. And I know the reason why. Um, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. And I'll read a couple of verses. And I will commence. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when th and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them, bind them for a sign upon thine hand. My God. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write up them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig and wells dig which thou diggest not vineyards and olive tree which thou plantest not, yes. when thou shalt have eaten and be full. <coughs> and this is the verse that was highlighted. Then beware lest thou forget the My Lord God. which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now Deuteronomy, this particular chapter, this verse was written just before the children of Israel were gonna take Canaan. Yes. And prior to that, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And this set of people, I, I, I wonder to myself, can I compare myself to them? Yeah. Because for me to get this warning, beware lest I, I forget. I mean, prior to that, they had just seen the Red Sea open. My Lord. I know it was 40 years ago, but still you can't forget something like that after being in bondage for 400 yes. years. Yeah. Then you see the Red Sea open up before you. So I thought to myself, how could I forget that? You know, but I realized that this trait is going to be in the church as well. Yes. If I could say that, that in Second Timothy 3, it says that there will be perilous times. My God. Yes. Yes. And it's not talking about times outside of the world, it's talking about times in the church. Yes. There's going to be some characteristics that will be perilous, and one of them is unthankfulness. Come on. And yes. I'm beginning to think, how could unthankfulness be rife among us as, God, as, as believers? Yes. You know, after seeing everything that he's, he's done for us. He might not have seen the Red Sea open up, but he's done wonderful things My for God. us. You know? And as we read Joshua 4, you know, the um, children of Israel were told to put stones in the river as a remembrance. Yes. But you know, as we go through the story of um, the Bible, Judges, the book of Judges, yes, yes. they forgot, they never told their children, never told the people that the kids coming after them. My God. As we see the routine of judges, they sinned, and then God sent an oppressor. Yes, yes. They cried out to God, he sent a judge. Amen. They did this around 
seven or eight times, seven times. throughout a span of a couple hundred years. Yes. Um, and what I'm trying to encourage myself with, and, and I pray that we will take this as well, is to really remember our testimonies, where we're coming from. Yes. Really remember, and not only that, we need to tell the young ones like Micah, because yes. they're going to be doing greater works than us. Yes. All right. and, you know, we have to really preserve them, because they're coming up afterwards, but we have to keep our testimony fresh. Yes. Um, something that I don't do, to be honest, starting at home with myself, I, I don't believe I tell Micah a lot what God's done for me over the years. Even when I was baptized as a 16 year old, the little battles, now I've been small to other people, but when I first got baptized, small story, um, the week after, as you all know, I like to play basketball, um, and I had a very intimidating coach. I was scared of this coach, at one point I wanted to kind of quit. Um, so I had a game to play, and this was actually by the following week after I got baptized, and this was a Sunday, and I was playing basketball on Sunday. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. But my manager, my coach, we were playing a team, one of the best, I would say, in the region. And he told me that he wanted me to guard their best player, who was six foot seven at the time. And he was about 17, 16 year old, my age. And he told me he wanted me to guard him, stop him from scoring. And I was only, what, five foot 10? as skinny as what you see right now. <laughs> so I wanted to know, how am I gonna stop this six foot seven guy and I'm five foot 11, couple pounds? But Saints, as much as it was probably small to other people, I stopped this six foot seven guy from scoring. All he told me, my, what my manager told me to do, my, my coach said, just put your hands up. That's all you can do, put your hands up. And that was, is that the only encouragement you got in my head? But to be honest, it worked. I just literally stood there in the post, put my hands up, and this guy only scored four points, and he was probably one of the best scorers in the league. But I say that to say, let's tell the young people, even though it might be silly, or silly in our eyes, just tell them our little bat battles that we had yes. when we were young. Yes. Uh, as I said, I was baptized when I was 16, and, and I know some of you have heard one or few stories coming through college, what I had to go through, that's, that's only a pinprick of what I could be telling Micah, of all the temptations and Christian, all the temptations that I had to fight, and God brought me through some, yeah. some yeah. temptations yeah. that I would probably not want to really say now. But yes, I just want to encourage us as the elders as well. Um, the Bible says that the old men will dream dreams and the young men shall vision. And they work in tandem. So we should be telling them our dreams. And in turn, we should be hearing their visions. You know, as we get older, we're not, what's the word? We're not, we, we still have a place in the church. Yeah, and we have to encourage them. These are my few words in Jesus' name.